two, three. What has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. Amen. Let's read that again. One more time. What has uh, been. Let's count to three and everybody in the house. Let's read it loud and clear. I want to get this in the atmosphere. Let's break this atmosphere with the word uh, as loud as you can. One, two, three, go. What has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. Keep going, verse okay. 10. Is there anything of which one can say, look, this is something new. It was here already long ago. It was here before our time. Amen. Praise the Lord. Y'all may be seated. Hallelujah. Now, thank you, and Anna Marie, bless you. Anna Marie Cooley, bless you. Now, let me read this. It says, that which has been, and I'm reading this one in the New King James Version. It says, that which has been is what will be. That which is done is what will be done. And there is nothing new under the sun. Is there anything of which it may be said, see, this is new. It has already been in ancient times before us. Now, I want somebody to catch this because I want your spirit to be inspired that there's something that you don't know. There's more. There's more to know. There's more to receive. There's more to catch. And there's more to do that even you may not have been aware of. And so God is trying to wake us up. There's an awakening he's trying to inspire in you to begin to understand that there's more so that you can receive out of the more. You can't receive out of what you don't have a revelation is available. Uh, is somebody hearing me? I feel my spirit. You can't receive from anything that you don't have a revelation that it's available. I've said this all the time. The first revelation you need to get revelation is that you don't have revelation. Does that make sense? So uh, 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 you can't fill a cup that thinks it's full. It would never remove its cap. You would never be able to fill it. The cup believes it's full. It believes there's no more water that can, it can contain. So this cup is deceived. It's, it's deceived in thinking that it's received all of the water that's available. When in fact God is trying to give the revelation that there's more. That in fact not only are you not full, but there's more than just what you think can fill. It's available. So you can't receive a revelation outside of what you believe is available. The beginning of entering into a new level, the beginning of entering into a new dimension is getting the revelation that there's something more available. When you begin to uh, understand that there's something more available, one of two things will happen. You'll begin to inquire. You'll begin to question. And that questioning will either lead you into searching or lead you into shutting down. This is why we see many people when they confront the prophetic, another level of the prophetic, another level of the supernatural. You see people respond either one or two ways. They either inquire to search 
or they're led into shutting down. Because whenever you see something that you can't understand or you can't make sense of, it's human nature to shut down around it. And when you shut down in front of these types of things, you always go back to what you think you already know. And then anyone that seems to be doing more, knowing more, seeing more, they're wrong. You're right where you understand what you already know. And anyone that knows more than that is wrong. Anyone in the body of Christ that is doing more than just saying a simple prayer is in witchcraft. Uh, when in fact, the church was always supposed to be supernatural. The church is supposed to be doing more than the occult. Christians are supposed to be traveling in the spirit realm more than witches do. Uh, did I say something there? Christians should be operating spiritually more than witches, more than warlocks, should be doing more extraordinary things. But yet we have this ideal in Christianity that supernatural is only for the occult. So we've diminished Christianity to just word. When the Lord said the demonstration of the kingdom is in power, power and indeed. So where's the power of God? Somebody say there's more. It's available. But wait, there's more. <laughs> it's available. So you have to get the revelation that there's more. You have to get the understanding that there's something else. There's something available. And when you get that understanding, you begin to search. You begin to get hungry. You begin to press in for the more that's available. There's so much available in this kingdom. And I'm going to tell you today where it actually is. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let's go to a scripture real quick. Let's go to Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55. Manturakam. Bless you, Williams. Bless you, Danny Johnson. Bless you. Hallelujah. Mansurani es prakala fantelavi. Manzurakeraman. Isaiah 55. And it says here, I'm going to read this. It says here, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. And we're in 55, 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. So the Lord's talking about higher ways, higher places, higher realms, higher dimensions, and when we read this scripture, we think to ourselves, man, the Lord is out there. <laughs> He's unreachable. <laughs> His ways are out of reach. We're so small and distant from him. We know nothing compared to what he knows. How many ever read that scripture? And that's what you really begin to think. Wow, his ways are so much farther away from us. When that's not what the scripture is actually saying. The scripture says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Meaning, where you are is not 
where God wants you to remain. He's saying, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Watch this. Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. So let me give you a revelation. Did you know you were never supposed to be living in your thoughts? Uh, God says, these things called my thoughts, they're not mine. Or these things called your thoughts, they're not mine. Did you catch it? These things that you call your, your ways, your plans, they're, they're, they're not mine. They're, they're, not, they're, they're not mine. When we read the scripture, we hear, man, we'll never get in touch with the Lord. He's just so far out there. When God is saying, no, 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 no. I'm trying to identify what you're living out of. I'm identifying what you're living called your thoughts. That's why you're struggling where you are. I'm trying to identify that what you're living is called your ways. That's why you're stuck and you can't go any further. But I want to introduce you into what I've ordained for you to live out of called my thoughts. I want to introduce you to another plan called my plan, my ways. You were never ordained to live out of your thoughts and your ways, but you were meant to live out of his. So in fact, the Lord is not saying that you're so far away from me, you can never achieve my thoughts or my ways. He's actually saying my thoughts are ordained to be with you. My ways are ordained to be with you. Where my thoughts are your thoughts and my ways become your ways and your ways become my ways and your thoughts become my thoughts. He wants you to become one with his thoughts. He wants you to become one with his ways. Do you see the scripture? I'm going to prove it to you. Watch this. I'm going to prove it to you. Watch this. Because if you keep reading the scripture, it says this. Now, earlier in this service, we talked about letting your faith be creative. Why does your faith be creative? Because God functions out of a creative realm. God functions out of a creative realm. Why do you think there's poetry in the Bible? Why do you think there's allegories in the Bible? Why do you think that there are stories in the Bible? Why do you think Jesus spoke out of parables? Because God functions in a creative realm. So you have to be able to read the scripture with a creative mind, not an analytical mind. But a creative mind can receive the spirit of the Lord because the Lord speaks, he exists, he functions in a creative realm. Watch this. If you keep reading, it says, as the heavens are higher than the earth. So God now begins to compare a high thing. He begins to compare a high thing to a low thing. He says, as the heavens are higher than the earth. The earth being a lower thing, the heavens being a higher thing. Watch this. He says, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. And then the scripture goes on to say, as the rain comes down. <laughs> what does it say, Elijah? And the snow from heaven. returneth not thither. Did somebody catch it? He said, heaven is high, yes. The earth is low. But even as the rain comes down, what is he saying? My thoughts are coming to you. My ways are coming to you. Watch this. And it says, and returns not what? To where... <laughs> So the Lord is saying this, I'm delivering something to you and I'm not taking it back. So the Lord is saying this, I'm emptying heaven out to you. What you're looking for is no longer in heaven. I've already poured it out to you. My thoughts, my ways. I've already distributed to them where you are. They're right where you are. 
waiting for a man and a woman to begin to draw it out, to possess a spirit, to begin to draw from the resources that are already available to us in this realm. There's no spectacular, magnificent place you need to go to achieve something. But the Lord says simply by grace, simply by faith. The Bible says a man of understanding. It says deep calls unto deep. It says uh, uh, deep are the thoughts of a man. It says a man of understanding will draw it out. So. Why do we read in Ecclesiastes, it says, there's nothing new under the sun. God has already provided the resources by grace and faith. There's something you don't know. It doesn't mean it's not here. There's things you're not aware of. It doesn't mean they're not available. Oh, somebody's hearing me. Somebody say, it's available. This is, why, this is why what we do here at the Breakout Center is so vital. Because the Bible says, how will they know unless they hear? And how will they hear unless someone is sent? How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace? The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word. So, some of your next level breakthrough, some of the power that you need is locked up in a word that the Lord is trying to get to you. You'll never know unless you hear. And there's a place where God himself won't tell you. He's already deposited here. Do you know what the storehouse of knowledge in this earthly realm is? It's not a library. He stored all of the riches of knowledge, grace, and faith in the earth realm in the hearts of men and women. Do you see? Somebody knows what you don't know. Ah, somebody's not ready for me today. How do you know it? Nothing can be achieved outside of the knowledge of achieving it. Even earthly knowledge versus spiritual knowledge. You see someone with a bigger house than you, they know something you don't know. You see someone with six cars and you're still trying to get one. They know something you don't know. And I'm just talking about earth realm. I haven't even talked about spirit realm. They just know something you don't know. You see someone uh, has, has, has just opened three new franchises. You're still trying to get your business off the ground. They know something you don't know. So people who know how to get a hold of knowledge know to access some things. This is why school can be good. This is why education can be good. This is why you need to learn something. And I'm still just talking about earth realm. There's laws that govern knowledge and success in the earth realm. You go on YouTube and there's all this how-to. Millions and millions of videos of how-to, how to become a millionaire. And listen, if you actually tapped into some of that knowledge, you may actually find a level of success in there because it's all on what you know. People who can get outside of what they think they know and begin to tap in to find what they don't know, those are people that are on their way to success. 
Notice people who never advance in life, they always think they know. Do you know somebody who just thinks they know everything? They just fat with their own information. And they're always talking about what they're going to do and who they don't need to listen to. Oh. And they'll stay there. Because the beginning of the next level of success is getting the knowledge of that level. Uh, you're a fool if you think you'll achieve the next level without the knowledge of the next level. Now watch this before I lose it. I said earlier in the broadcast, Watch out for five steps and five steps because when we get into spiritual knowledge, there's an information, there's a revelation that you can get a hold of that will literally transport your spirit into another dimension, into another realm. Where which you could not go unless you knew or possessed the word of that realm or that level. So God has deposited that word in someone. So the Lord will send you somewhere to get the revelation of your next dimension. And some might say, well, I, well, why can't the Lord just pour it out to me in my house where I am? That's the same thing I used to think. And I stayed stuck. For years, me and my gift itself, I stayed stuck for years and years and years. I had to hear someone. I had to connect with someone that was in that dimension, that was connected to the Lord. God deposited something into someone. Is somebody hearing me? This is why teachers are important. They're passing on revelation from one generation to another. The knowledge of Catherine Coleman's, Coleman's dimension was poured out while this, she was here, and she got the knowledge from someone else in that dimension, someone else in that level, in the spirit of the Lord. And even our Bible is full of the knowledge of levels and dimensions of his word. So what am I saying? Everything is available. It's here. God is trying to send someone to receive it, to possess it, to get it. Ah, oh, somebody pray. Thank you, Lord. Now, there's something the Lord wants you to catch. There's something he wants you to begin to press into. There's a never-ending wealth of revelation, of knowledge, of word that's hidden in this realm, right where we are. God poured it out already. The Bible says in Acts 2, the Bible says the prophet, uh, the apostle, he prophesied he said it in Joel I will pour out my spirit on all flesh young men shall dream dreams old men shall young men shall see visions old men shall dream dreams when the apostle spoke that word it was prophesied hundreds of years prior that God said I will then the apostle preached and said this very thing he has done now. Meaning that his spirit was already 
poured out. There's power available. There's word available. There's resources available in the earthly and spiritual atmosphere. Waiting for someone's faith to grab a hold of it. Even here in Cleveland, we see buildings, we see houses, we see properties. Some of these properties, even while I look out here, some of them, we see a building there, but the land is available in the realm of the spirit. Just because there's a building with somebody's name on it or an owner doesn't mean that it's not available. It's waiting for someone to claim it. It's available. It's waiting for someone with the faith to come around and say, I'll take it because that's how God establishes kingdom things. He establishes kingdom things with kingdom men and kingdom women with faith and a tenacity to claim it for the kingdom. Somebody says, I'll take it. I'll take that. So it's available. Don't be fooled. It's available. If you don't claim it, somebody else will. Somebody will come around with the faith to take it. There's vacancies right now. There's a plane, there's, a, there's, there's land available right now waiting for someone to claim it, to take it. Men have come from one generation to another. They have put things in places. And then someone came and put something somewhere. But in the realm of the spirit, there's empty lots. Because God only counts what his kingdom holds. He's looking for someone to possess the land. To possess the land. Hallelujah. It's available. It's all here. You just need faith to see it and faith to take it. Amen. Now imagine before the internet came, before radio waves, before all of this, men and women came to America and there were battles over land. Battles over plains, battles over territory. That was just one dimension of territory. Now in 2024, there's air to claim. The Bible calls Satan the prince of the power of the air. The prince of the power of the air. Why? Because Satan rules over principalities, certain principalities, demonic principalities, because not all principalities are demonic. Satan rules over certain demonic principalities that have possessed the air so their sound rules the region. Their sound controls the atmosphere in certain places. So now there's air to claim. This is why God needs intercessors. This is why he's looking for the prophets. So that we can begin to release a sound that begins to recapture the air that has been held captive. Is somebody hearing me? Listen, the air of your house has been held captive. When you arrived on the scene, there was a breaking of the air that needed to happen. 
And if you haven't started, you need to begin to create a new sound in your atmosphere. You need to begin to pray there. You need to begin to worship there. You need to begin to reclaim the air that's there. Reclaim the atmosphere. Dispossess the prince of that air. And begin to possess your air. Somebody say, possess your air. This is my air. This is breakout's air. Come on. Breakout's air. Because there's miracles, there's healing that resides in the air that's waiting for someone to tap into it and unlock the air. Somebody say unlock the air. There's a dimension in the air that if you unlock it, it will cause heaven to begin to manifest because heaven is already here. Heaven is already here in the air. It's been locked up by demons that shut down faith. So when a man or woman of God comes in with faith and begins to preach and begins to pray and begins to prophesy, they're unlocking heaven that's already in the air. And then heaven begins to be exposed. Heaven begins to manifest. And then other people come along and they begin to echo that same voice, that same sound, that same word. And the atmosphere of the region begins to be unlocked. And revival is able to begin to come forth. Breakthrough is able to come forth. God's people can begin to uh, 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 get out of stuck places. Visions begin to return. The prophet Daniel, he had a thought. The Bible says the angel of the Lord came and said, I was dispatched on your thought, but I came back with a vision from the Lord in response, but I was trapped by a principality that had locked the air. I came with a vision to you. But the principality locked the air. I contended with him over air. Then Michael had to come. And help break me out of that air. So that I could deliver the vision to you. There's vision in the air. Listen, there's dreams in the air over someone's bed that's been locked up that God is unlocking tonight. He's unlocking the air over your bed. You thought the dreams left. No, they're right there in your air. That realm, that dimension of the air was locked up from you because faith can only access that air. Faith, listen, faith will turn the air inside out and reveal the heaven that was there. Ha! Ah. Somebody pray. Lord, we pray. Unlock our air. Cause us to get the revelation of what's available right in our noses. God has sent a prophet to this region. There's an unlocking of the realms and the dimensions and the portals of this place. And even those who are watching online, even your region, your area, there's a grace for an unlocking to take place even where you are. Father, I pray, let this grace touch someone. Let the knowledge and the word of the next level touch someone that they may enter into a new dimension in 2024, we pray. Mansura kalabra Let your glory go forth even now like a mist. Saturate the atmosphere 
saturate the air of every house. Let worship come forth. Let your word come forth. Let intercession be stirred. When we walk into that atmosphere, it's easy to pray. It's easy to prophesy. It's easy to see. It's easy to believe. It's easy to have faith because the air has been reclaimed. The air has been restored. The air has been repossessed. In the mighty name of Jesus, I bind every demon in the atmosphere. Every spirit that has compromised the air, every spirit that has shut down visions, that has shut down revelation, that has shut down faith, that has sought to shut down miracles. In the mighty name of Jesus, deliver the air today. Every hiding spirit in the very fabric of the atmosphere, I expose you with the light of the Lord and the light of his word today in Jesus almighty name we thank you Lord for a fresh anointing a fresh restoration of the atmosphere of this people this place this region this nation today in Jesus almighty name we pray and somebody said amen Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Whew.